What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Get Real Bass Fishing. Today we are back inside of the fish cave and we are going to be going through some of the comments that we've been getting lately in our comment section under our videos. So if you guys want to see your comment potentially in the next couple videos or I guess I should say in a couple videos in the future, we're going to continue to do videos like this because one thing is like I can make videos, me and Erica, we make videos for you guys, but also your comments, your input, your your tips and tricks, whatever, those are just as valuable. And for people to just watch our videos and not read the comments, is they're kind of missing out. So we want to highlight some of those comments and that's what we're going to do in today's video. Let's go. start off these videos with a question for you guys in the comments section below. This is going to be probably one of our first things we're going to talk about in the next video. So if you want to answer this question, go ahead. We'll read some of them in the next video where we do stuff like this. So the question is, do you think it is more important to follow tides or time? Now you can answer however you want, whether or not it's following one or following the other or following both or following much more. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. So we're going to be going through some video comments right here. Let's start, uh, I guess we'll start with some of the most recent ones. It says, so what are your thoughts of wearing waders on the jetty? I see folks doing it, but also I know if you fall in and water gets in, you can be really screwed. So that is a true statement. You can get really, really screwed up if uh, you fall off a jetty wearing waders and water gets in that's that could be a deadly mix right there so my opinion is be smart don't do anything stupid and i tell my friends that all the time see you later don't do anything stupid that's that's what i say and when it comes to fishing jetties that's got to be your main priority of course like a rogue wave could come but listen don't do anything stupid if you're not overly prepared to accept a stupid result so when it comes to boot foot waders i gotta say those are probably the more safe jetty i want to say fill as far as filling up um as like if you're fishing jetties you can cut those waders off rip them off and you're good when it comes to fishing jetties with waders and boots you got to worry about getting your boots off and your waders so in my opinion i'm going to start fishing uh the rocks and the jetties with my new spike boots i got them down there my frog togs because i lost my corkers so I got my frog tog boots. I'm gonna start fishing in a wetsuit. That way I'm a little bit more buoyant. And if I need to, uh, I can float as, as, as opposed to sinking with filling up waders. So uh, I would say if you can, then definitely wear wetsuits with your spiked boots. But I highly recommend wearing corkers or boots or spikes of some sort on the rocks. And if it's green, do not step on it. Green is slimy. Try to avoid stupid situations, stupid scenarios where you can eventually uh, kick the bucket. Along those lines, we got something from Steve-O outside. He says, good video bro, careful on those rocks with no corkers. You don't like the boots with them built in? I know you need the sock waders for them, but man are they comfortable. Only downfall is sand build up. So that's true, the sand does build up inside of your boots, but a lot of times the waders that come with it, they'll have a flap that goes over your boot to minimize the amount of sand that comes in. And as far as fishing the sand or the open surf or the back bay or something like that, I do like the boot foot waders as opposed to the boots with the, the corkers and stuff like that. Because one, yes, you have the sand and all that stuff that does still affect um, no matter what, even with the flaps. But it's just easier. You go on the beach, you go in the back bay, you slip on some boot foot waders, you go out fishing. That's that's all it is. As opposed to tying up salty laces and having to worry about how heavy the boots are, because a lot of these boots are really, really heavy, and it just takes more time. You gotta retie if you're in the surf, and they un they, they untie all the time. But I prefer boot foot waders, or just not wearing any waders at all, fishing the bay or fishing the beach. I like that. This is funny. Someone said, hey, where are you fishing at? And then someone responded with, looks like the ocean or the bay. That's true. Most of the time it's the ocean or the bay. So if you're trying to find those spots, then one of those. So somebody commented, do you tie snap swivels to your leader? 
So when it comes to snap swivels or duo snaps or whatever it might be, I tie barrel swivels to the top and then I tie TA clips to the bottom. That's my easy way out. If I'm not doing that and I'm not feeling lazy that day, whatever it might be, I'll tie in a either an FG, Alberto, or a um, uni to uni knot direct from my braid to my mono, and then I'll tie a TA clip. Typically, I always have a TA clip. Um, I use like the 120 pound ones, so it's like heavy duty stuff. I, I just, I prefer that because I can just keep switching out baits as opposed to having to retie and retie, cut, retie, and all that stuff. So I do always at least have a TA clip to attach my lures and sometimes a barrel swivel from the main line to the, um, the mono leader, or I just tie a couple knots. So here's a comment from one of my old videos from a couple years ago, fishing in the sound off of Brian's boat. It's the hooking in the giant fluke video. And I actually lost my biggest fluke to date uh, during that video. And it was because we didn't have a net and somebody commented to never fish without a net, LOL. And to that I responded with 100%. <laughs> so guys, if you're ever going out on a boat or a kayak, make sure you have a net because you don't want to lose a fish just because you did not have a net. I know what it feels like, so have a net with you. Alan A said, I'd just like to say you were one of my favorite fishing channels. That is really awesome to hear. Thank you very much. Shout out to Alan A. That was some, some really cool things to see. Uh, we have a bunch of comments like that and I really appreciate it. And it really makes, makes my day to see those kind of comments. So thank you to everyone who comments like that. I appreciate it. And I guess, thank you for watching. So really, you guys are the MVP. So I made a video a couple, I wanna say a couple weeks ago where it, it's titled how to find good spots to surf fish from from the beach. Inside of that video, I was showing you guys how to find certain spots and I was I put those little pop-ups on teaching you how to find spots on the open beach, not just where I was on the side of a jetty or things like that. And uh, someone commented the best way to find spots is if you could share your spots. So that's all well and good when you guys realize I have 17,000 people on my uh, videos uh, all the time, people checking out all of my spots every single video. So if I were to say specific spots, uh, nobody would be able to fish alone or at least with a handful of people. So the thing with this is it's easy to hand out something and it's easy to receive something. But if you just take that and that spot just stops producing all of a sudden, you're not going to realize why it stopped producing, where the fish are. You're not going to learn anything on how to find fish alone and go out and move down the beach or move down to a new bay or go down east or west or north or south, you won't be able to know what structure to look for. So I'm, my videos are not trying to be, hey, fish this spot. It's teaching you guys that spots that are similar, such as rips, structure, how the water's coming off the beach, where the current is going, uh, things like that. That's what the videos are here for so that you can go out, take it to your local places or you go on a vacation in Jersey, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, you're gonna waste that vacation by not knowing how to fish, or you're gonna watch these videos, know and learn how to fish, and then apply that to wherever you're going and catch fish. So these videos aren't necessarily handouts to you guys, like, oh, there's fish here, go there. Cause that would just be insane because you guys don't know how long these videos are before I upload or how quick these videos go up before I upload, whatever it might be. Like there could be some time between my videos and when I actually catch these fish. So this, these are more like learning videos. Learn from my experience, learn from our experiences and take it to where you're going and you'll figure something out. I promise, if you're always learning and, and improving what you've done, you're gonna catch fish anywhere you go. And that I think is more um, important than me telling you guys, fish this one spot, there's fish. Another one of my videos that I just got a comment on is my giant bluefish light tackle surf fishing from 2020. Uh, at the time, that was my personal best bluefish, and I was using light tackle. It was a eight foot Tsunami Trophy 2. And the comment is, so which rod were you using, the Trophy 2 or the Elite? Now, when it comes to Tsunami rods, um, I like the Trophy 2, Erica's Giant Bass, that one, was actually caught on a Trophy 2, that's a 10 foot. In this video, they're referring to an eight foot. And for the price, I like the uh, Trophy 2s as opposed to the Elites. 
just because of the price. If I can go for the elites, then I'll go for the elites. They're a little bit thinner and um, they're just a little bit tougher. So I like fishing the trophy twos because they're fun. And uh, if I break one, it doesn't hurt my bank account as much as breaking, let's say an airwave elite. So, I mean, they're kind of close, but I'd rather spend less money for something similar than spend more money on something that, you know, is I can get for cheaper. Here's a positive comment. This is from Will O'Brien. Live a thousand miles from salt by your videos are so entertaining. That's pretty awesome. So thank you for commenting that. I hope you see this video. Um, that's really cool to see and to hear because not only are we making videos for Long Island guys or Jersey guys or guys around the tri-state area, guys from down in Florida. I was reading my analytics the other day and our top three states that our videos reach is New York, New Jersey, and California. What the heck? <laughs> like California? For the longest time, I, I could have sworn that our videos were being reached around Long Island, New York, um, Jersey, Connecticut, and up, up and through New, New England. I thought that's where we were. And then to th see that my third po most popular state that watches my videos is California on the west coast thousands of miles away that's pretty crazy so uh, that's that's pretty neat we have a big family here on get real bass fishing and uh, i think it's pretty neat if you guys are from california and or not from new york comment below let us know where you guys are from all right i think we're gonna end on this question this is from sean thomas uh he posts a question he says question why don't you use steel leaders when catching bluefish one because steel leaders cost a lot of money when when you're going through them or losing them you take them off they're somehow we lose things all the time right so that is the big thing second i prefer not fishing steel leaders when i don't have to and i don't have to because i've caught fish or bluefish on mono leaders or fluorocarbon leaders and it does just as just as well and i can buy a big spool for like 11 bucks of mono, whether it's 40, 60, 80, however high you guys wanna go. You guys saw my videos from a couple weeks ago, I was fishing 20 pound mono. I don't recommend doing that, but I'm starting to just use 40 pound for bluefish. So I'd rather fish that than steel leaders. Um, it's just another thing that like, I've, I've caught bluefish on steel leaders and every single time that I've caught bluefish on steel leaders, they've snapped. Uh, I was using 40 pound leader and stuff like that and it just, they always snapped on me. So I was like, you know what, whatever, there's gotta be a different way or a cheaper way. Cause I was going through them. I was losing them, I was snapping off, losing lures. So I went with um, the 40 pound mono leader with the barrel swivel to the TA clip. And it's been serving me very, very well. So that's why I do that. And I, uh, I would say for the budget, it's easier just to buy a big spool of mono and just keep making leaders and leaders. And that's it. So that is the reason why I use mono as opposed to steel leaders. Anyway guys, I appreciate your comments. Clearly I respond to as many as I possibly can and uh, I think I've got every single comment responded to. So if I haven't responded to your comment, just know that I will at some point. So I appreciate them all. So keep going, keep keep commenting. Count, comment below from, the, from that first question what, what your opinion is and uh, we'll see it in the next video. So thank you guys for watching. If you're new to this channel, let us know that you're new because about 50% of you guys that watch my videos, my analytics are showing that you, this is your first time watching our videos. So we're getting out often and I wanna know if you guys are new. So welcome to the family, hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, we're gonna have a blast this year and we're gonna build a really cool fishing community around Get Real Bass Fishing on YouTube. So thank you guys for watching, stay real, smooch and release and have some fun on the water. We'll see you next time. Look at this place. It's a wall full of memories. Crazy stuff. Let's go see if there's any more comments to respond to.